Welcome back. It is time once again for us to get our minds aligned with the truth of God. And I hope you are ready to dive into the scriptures today because I have some thoughts that come from Psalm chapter 25. And these thoughts have to do with getting to know God, getting to know our God in a way that makes a difference in our lives. You see, I know in my life there have been times where I felt like I didn't quite know what to do to get closer to God. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt that way yourself? I think part of the problem is that we are creatures of feeling, of deep emotion. And as our emotions wax and wane, we often will feel like we are not close to God or that there's something we need to do to draw closer to him, draw nearer. And I think those are very valid feelings at times because sometimes the Lord uses what we're feeling to nudge us uh, to get with it, you know, to get moving toward him in active ways, to put our will into action so that we can choose to move closer to God. But even then, we don't always know what to do. And besides that, there is almost like this great chasm between us and God simply because he is so much higher than us. He is so much greater. He is exalted. He is perfect. He is holy. I mean, how do we even know how to begin the process of drawing near to a God like that? And that's where Psalm chapter 25 is so helpful to me. Because in verse 4, David prays a prayer that is, I think, very different from a lot of the kinds of prayers that we pray. Because I know for myself, at least, I tend to pray things like this. God, help me to do this or that. God, help me be this kind of person. And you see, that's good, but it's very different from what David prays here. Because David says in verse 4, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. You see, David is not saying, help me. He's saying, God, do the work. And it feels to me like there is a dependence and a desperation in David's prayer here. Perhaps he knows that if God does not do these things he's asking about, it will not happen. Because he knows himself so well, he knows that he is flawed and failing and unable. And my friends, when we are in those shoes, when we understand that kind of weakness and lack of direction and understanding of what to do to draw close to God, verses like this can be so helpful. Because verses like this are spoken, these kinds of prayers are spoken, in full knowledge of how helpless we are when it comes to knowing God, unless he reveals himself to us. And so David, in a gutsy kind of grace, tells God what to do. He says, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. You see, he can say that confidently and he can say it in that way because these are things he knows the Lord wants for him. And so he's saying, God, I don't know how to do it. You do it. Make me know. Teach me your paths. Lead me. And he says, for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day long. There is a desperation and a hunger behind this kind of a prayer. And my friends, if you need to know God, and we all do, we need to rely on him to help us know him, to help us come near to him. And it's more than helping us. It actually is doing it for us. It's a deep dependence on the power and sovereignty and purpose of God to bring about his very best in our lives. So let me pray for us. God, make us to know your ways. Teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us and open our hearts to receive you for who you really are, that we may fear you with hearts of humility. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.